peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break at your name still. Call the sea to still, the rage in me to still every wave at your name, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Breathe, call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus. Your name is the light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is the light forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus, Jesus. the shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome your name is alive that the shadows can't
Hey, welcome to Prairie Lakes Church. I'm Cody, I'm one of the pastors around here and I'm really excited to spend uh, a little bit of time with you here today. Uh, but before we get started, before anything else, uh, we need you to hear this, that we are a no matter church. What that means is no matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, or even what's been done to you, we need you to know that God loves you, that we love you, and you can look for God here with us. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to clean yourself up to be here. Uh, we're just really glad that you're here. But if you are new, uh, or you're newer, and you just haven't taken that step to get connected, to become known, to um, meet someone, to ask questions, to even see how we can be praying for you, um, I'd encourage you to take that step to become known today. And you can do that by filling out our welcome card. Uh, and if you fill out our welcome card, I'll send you an Amazon gift card here today, um, just as a thank you for taking that step. So all you need to do is to take out your phone uh, right here in this moment and text just three letters, PLC to 99581. And the next step uh, that we take here is giving generously. And when you give practically, um, <laughs> you help change lives here in the state and beyond. Uh, so we are just thankful uh, for all of you that have given so generously that allow us to do the ministry, to allow us to have seven physical campuses across Iowa, to have an online campus. Uh, so thank you uh, to everyone that has been so generous um, here at Prairie Lakes Church. And if you do wanna take that step here today, uh, you can do that online by going to prairielakes.org forward slash give, and you can select your campus from the drop down. We're going to continue in today's service. Let's kick to today's message. Hey, welcome. So glad you're here this weekend. Really good job. I'm proud of each of you. And I know some of you um, just getting uh, to your campus on a weekend <laughs> or, or getting to your, your TV uh, and, on vacation or wherever you're at, it, 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 it takes some effort. So I want you to know I appreciate it. And I think that uh, when you make the effort, God always rewards and blesses that. So really, really good job. Um, I just want to go back uh, to the last series. We, we, were, we spent five weeks in stories that Jesus told. And I, I just say, man, thanks for going on the journey and, and on weekends. And then many, many of you were in a group. And, and the goal was this, is this, that not only do we learn, you know, kind of what the stories are, right? And, and, and stories that Jesus told, but, but we kind of learn how to read our Bible even a little bit better. And then as we're doing that, we're, we're asking God to transform us. So I, I, I hope that you felt like I did. I, every week in that series was, was convicting and confirming and affirming and, 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 and afflicting all at the same time for me. So, so thanks for being a part of that. Thanks for all your prayers to keep things going. All right, so here's what we're going to do now. Um, we're going to continue our journey towards Easter, right? So we're four weeks away. And so we're going to walk down this, this, this Lenten journey with, a, with what we pray will be a spiritually um, and personal transforming time for you. So we're going to learn and practice how to listen. And, and, and I, I, this is, it, it's just one of those ones that like, it seems really easy and it seems really simple, but, but I'm, I'm telling you this, when it comes to spiritual growth, and some of us feel very, very stuck right now. I understand. Some of us feel very lost. And, and, or, and some of us feel very stalled out. I'm going to present this great dilemma to you. There is no growing, no learning, no changing, no moving forward without hearing God speak. And listening to God is one of the hardest things to do. So, so we're going to go on a journey and spend these weeks saying, how do we listen to God? And, and, and the series is going to go like this. It's going to be through quiet, and you can see where we're going, okay? But uh, our goal is this, that you'll, you'll, you'll grow, you'll change. No matter where you're starting on this faith line journey, you'll grow and change and, and, uh, because we started to teach you how to listen. So we're going to do it this weekend. We're going to start with this. We're going to listen through quiet, okay? We're going to listen through quiet. <laughs> and, and we're going to kind of, kind of explore this, a quiet place, gives God room to cultivate a quiet posture 
in me, kind of how I live, how I approach life, my, my posture to my, my spouse if I'm married, my, my little Iowa, my, my workplace. A quiet place gives God room to cultivate, right, to, to work on a quiet posture in me. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, walk down a little bit of, of no-brainer here because I, we, I shouldn't have to convince you that quiet's a good thing, okay? So let's just, just take a, a quick journey from, from Old Testament to New Testament, of this concept of quiet, okay? So way back in Exodus, it says this, the Lord will fight for you, and you only have to be silent, okay? So, so he, he keeps rolling. In, in Job, he said this, teach me, and I'll be silent, Make me understand how I have gone astray, okay? So keep going. We hit the Psalms. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. <laughs> Later in the Psalms, be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations and I'll be exalted in the earth. Okay? Keep going. New Testament now with Jesus. And rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate or quiet place, and there he prayed. And then here's one more from Luke. But he would withdraw to a desolate or quiet places, and, and, and he would pray. After all that, right? I mean, it's, this, is, this is one of those things. We, we, we know that, that, that quiet and the quiet spirit and a quiet posture and, and being able to, to listen to God through quiet, we, we, we know that that, that is something that's good. So the question is, why do we avoid it? Why do we find it so hard to do? Why is it so rare that it happens in our lives? Now, I'm going to start with this statement. and I'm, I, Okay, get, get ready, okay? Here it is. Actively avoiding quiet, which most of us do, almost always is the result, the result of sin. Okay, so just sit there with me for a minute, okay? Moving floating, running, hiding, being busy, flitting from one thing to another, one activity to another, one relationship to another, all at the expense of just quiet with God, actively avoiding quiet, almost always is a result of sin. I don't want to face myself, and I don't want to face God. So if I can just keep talking, just keep moving, just keep skirting around. I don't have to face him, and I don't have to face me. <laughs> let's, let's be honest about this, okay? Sin disquiets our spirits. Sin wants me to run, to escape, to hide, to avoid, to cover. And just think about this, right? At your lowest uh, far from God sees it in your life. So think about, some of you go, I'm in it right now, okay? But think about that. Your life was a whirlwind inside and outside, a busyness and a hurriedness and a restlessness that just kept you moving. I, 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 I thought through this and in, in my own life, I, I, this is a pattern that's true. I, I, I go back way back to before I even stepped over the faith line to trust Christ and, and say, I, I surrender to him and, 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 and accept Jesus as my only hope, right? And so before that, at my, my lowest, my, my hardest running point, my darkest point, right? I, I can just look back and it was just a whirlwind. We were going from party to, to party and relationship to relationship. And I can, I can remember the season, and it was literally the season just before I finally surrendered to Christ. I mean, it was, it was out all night, and it was, it, was, it was being with these people, and we were ending up in places, and I didn't even know where we were. And it was just this whirlwind that was, that was going around me, and I was disquieted inside, and I was swirling on the outside, and it was not just back then, okay? It's not just back, it's now that way for me. It's now as a 59-year-old pastor. When there's sin in my life, and whether it's a relational sin or whether it's a, something going on inside of me, sin, something I'm doing I shouldn't be doing, sin, whatever, the, whatever it is, the pattern is this. When there's a restlessness in me, a hurriedness, a, a, a busyness, a, 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 a wanting to move and slide and shake and go, always in my life, it, 
it's a picture that sins in, 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 in the way. And so I avoid quiet. I avoid it. So let's go to a, let's go to a quick study, a biblical study of, of what happens to us when we actively avoid listening to God through quiet. So here's what I want. Everybody grab your Bible, okay? And, and if you, you don't have one, there's maybe some on the chairs around you at your campus. Use your phone. But we're going to go to this Old Testament book uh, of, of Isaiah. And you think, oh, that's hard to find, right? And you go, no, but it's not. Because you go to Psalms, the big book, 150 chapters. So you can find Psalms really easily. And then after Psalms is Proverbs. And after Proverbs is Ecclesiastes. And after Ecclesiastes is Song of Songs, and after Song of Songs is Isaiah. So if you get the Psalms, big, giant collection of books, right? Then you can just go a little to the right and you'll find Isaiah. And go to Isaiah and just turn to chapter 30 and just sit there with me for a minute. Let me give you just a little bit of, of details on this. This book, Isaiah, was written um, by a prophet that God would send, that sent to the nation of Israel. Now, this is 700 B.C., kind of around that season, 700 years before the birth of Christ would come. And, and the, the deal was this. We've talked about this before, right? So Israel is God's chosen people, and yet what do they continue to do? They continue to go, yeah, we trust you, God, and then things get hard or something happens, or things go really well, and they start stepping away from God. And then Isaiah would come and say, all right, if you don't, if you don't come back, if you don't repent, here's what's going to happen. God's going to smoke you. And sure enough, they'd say, oh, we've got this. And God would have to send a raiding army in and, and have to humble them. Or, and, and it, just, it was just this pattern on repeat, right? On repeat, on repeat, on repeat. Well, Isaiah is, is, is that book where he just continues to come in and says, come on, come on, come on. Well, what's happening in chapter 30 uh, is this. The Israelites, God's chosen people, 700 years before the Messiah would come, they found themselves in trouble again. Now, one thing you have to remember about Israel, whenever we talk about the Old Testament, right, the best picture I can give you um, of, of, of how that region was working, all those, in the Old Testament was this. Israel was always a mouse among the big cats. It just was always that way. They were always kind of the underdog. They were always the small nation. They were always the, the mouse among the cats. So the cats were, you know, the, the Egyptian. The, the cats were the, the Assyrians, right? And, and then, right, then it was the Romans later, right? But, but think of it that way. So one of the cats at this time um, were the Assyrians. And here's what was happening. They, they were growing in number and strength. They had a huge army, and they were threatening the border of of Israel. They were, they were threatening to get them. And, and so, so they, they formed an alliance, Israel did, with Syria and Canaan to get help from, of all people, the Egyptians, right? Now, what's wrong with that? Well, they're the ones who had them enslaved, okay? So, so, so of all the people, they, 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 they said, hey, the Assyrians are, are, are threatening us, and, and we, we don't know what we're going to do. They're going to they're gonna conquer us. They're going to destroy us. So we're going to make some pacts with our enemies, uh, the people that, <laughs> that, have, that, have, that have eaten us up before, and then we're going to go, and we're going to say, Egypt, would you, would you help us? And so, so right smack in the middle of chapter 30, there's this verse that we're going to center on. There's this verse, okay? So here's what it says. Woe to those, okay? This is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. And repentance and rest is your salvation. And quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Right? So there's the scene. The Assyrians are, are on the border ready to destroy him. And, and the Israelites say, we're going to turn to our enemies, form an alliance with them, and then with them go back to our big enemy, the other big cat, the Egyptians, and they're going to save us. And, 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 and in the middle of that, Isaiah the prophet, he says to them, this is what the Lord says to you, Israelites, and repentance and rest is your salvation. <laughs> and quiet and, and trust is your strength, but you'd have none of it. Okay, they were actively avoiding the listen to God through quiet. They were, they were avoiding it. The quietness would have, would have, would have made them strong, but they, they wouldn't have it. Assyria was bearing down, threatening to smash them. And how did God's people respond? They actively avoided the quiet with God. 
which would give him strength. <laughs> so, so just, just sit in this chapter just for a minute. I, I find this amazing. Because this is a picture. What they did is the same thing that I do and, and, and probably you do, okay? So actively avoiding quiet with God. Here's what it leads to, ready? The first thing is this. It leads to this. Homemade plans instead of God-made plans, okay? Homemade plans instead of God-made plans. So, so let, let, let's go to the, the, the first verse of the, of, the, of the passage in Isaiah 30, and it says this, Ah, oh, stubborn children, declares the Lord. Now remember, this is Isaiah speaking this to the Israelites, who carry out a plan, but not mine, and who make an alliance, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. And then he says this, who set out to go down to Egypt without asking for my direction. Okay, do you see what they're doing? The pressure's on. Things are, things are happening. And instead of going to the one place, instead of getting their strength from just going, God, here we are. We're sitting with you. God, we're going to come and we're going to be quiet. We're going to hear your voice. God says this. Here's what you do. You made a homemade plan instead of a God-made plan. You, you carry out a plan, but it's not mine. You make it alliance, but it's not from me. And you go down to all places in Egypt without asking for my direction. They were actively avoiding the listen through quiet. And here's the scary part about this. They'd seen God deliver them again and again and again. And yet, what do they do? They say, I know better than God how to handle this situation. I know what we should do. And instead of waiting and being quiet and listening to God, they go and they move and they make their own plans, which aren't God's. My friends, hear this. You and me, we do the same thing. It's really hard to listen to God through quiet. It just is. And so, so to avoid that difficulty and to avoid that, that effort that it takes, we always revert back to this. Well, I know what's best for me. Well, I know what kind of relationship I want to be in. Well, I know what I should spend my money on. Well, I know what career I should take. Well, I know what, when I should move on. Well, I know when I should do this. Well, I know when I should get that. And, 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 and just like the Israelites, we would look at them and we'd say, what is wrong with them? Why would they do a plan that wasn't God's? And why would they make an alliance, but, but not, not from, from, from God's spirit? And, and why would they go down to Egypt without asking for, for any direction from God? Why would they do that the same reason you and I do? Because when sin's involved, we just go. And we just avoid God. And we just keep moving because we think we know better than him. Their story is our story. I have a plan for life. I have a plan for the season. And what I have seems safer than waiting and listening to God and getting my strength from Him. Sounds crazy, but we do it all the time. So when we, 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 we get this lesson from the Israelites, right? When they actively avoid the quiet with God and turning to God in quiet, right? They do homemade plans instead of God-made plans. And then there's, there's another part to it. Here's, here's the second part that happens when, when we avoid this, okay? There's this increasing cycle of sin. Go back to that first and second verse in there. And, and right back in the middle of it, right? He, he's saying, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And then he says this, that they may add sin to sin. In other words, you sin, and then you, you, when you do it your own way and you don't listen to me, you add a little bit more on top of it. And then, then when you do that, you kind of get this spot where you got to kind of add a little bit more, and it's a, it's a little bit more, and it's sin on top of sin. And when you actively avoid quiet with God because you're, you, 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 you don't want to hear from, about you and you don't want to hear from God, the cycle of sin starts, and it starts to spin. And it, and it did it with these guys, and it does it with us. It, it's like this. I was, I was trying to eat, like, okay, so January comes along, and like most of you, I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm really going to eat really, really well. I'm going to eat good foods, and, and I'm going to drink uh, half a gallon. I couldn't do a gallon. The people drink a gallon of water a day. 
Dude, I'm at the age where I spend half my day in the bathroom if I do that. So, so, so I'm going to do all these things, right? So I'm doing it. And I go the first week, and it is fantastic. I didn't eat anything bad for me. I didn't drink anything bad for me. And I was actually feeling pretty good. And then, then, then I went to the second week, and Wednesday came, and I was tired, and, and, and I was busy, and, and the, the stuff was piling up. And, 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 and so I, I blew it. I, I literally, I won't forget this. My wife had, she makes Oreo fluff for all the grandkids. You know that Oreo fluff? And I took a whole roll of, a whole row of Oreos. And I took half of them first and I ate. A little boat ladder came back upstairs and I took the other half and I ate an entire row of Oreos. And here's what happened. I've blown it now. I have completely thrown it out the window. So what the heck, right? I spent the next week eating, drinking, all kinds of bad stuff. But it just, it just, here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. It's like a, it's like a gambler who thinks this. I, I'm going to get out of my hole. I'm just going to one more time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win this one. I'm going to do it. Man, when I was in college, there's a buddy of mine um, who, who got gambling with some bookies in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And he was gambling on football games. And I knew he was doing it, right? And, and he was doing, you know, 50 bucks or 100 bucks. And it was like, I, I had no money. So to me, that was crazy. But his dad was giving him money. And he was spending on gambling. And, and here's what was happening. He got himself in a hole. He was like $600. And, it, and back in that day, right, the early 80s, that was a, that's a the significant money for a college kid with bookies. And, and I can remember seeing him. His name was Reed. He was, he's watching the games. And he's just, he's sitting in the lounge. And he's pale. And he's, he's, he's shaking and he's almost in tears because he thought I could just do one more if I can just cover it with this one. Finally, his dad came and just took him out of school and, 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 and took him away. But that, that never left my mind. That man, when, once you start to kind of just go down a trail, the temptation is just to kind of keep going down that trail. And, and, and once I get kind of dependent on myself, I just want to, I want to keep moving and, 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 and keep going. The more refuse the strength of God through quiet and listen to his voice, the more we invite temptation to sin. Quiet keeps us close to God. Okay, so, so let's go to just one more, one more little lesson in, in this one. When you avoid quiet with God, okay, so, so, so not only, right, not, not only does it, does it like push you to your plan instead of God's plan, not only does it increase the cycle of sin, but here's what it does. Irrational fear will gather steam. And just, just look, look what happens here. So God, Isaiah says this to them. So right after in 15, when he says you, you're quiet, right, you're, you're quiet in strength, okay? A thousand will flee at the threat of one. Do you see the picture? At the threat of five, you will all flee away till you are left like a flagstaff on a mountaintop, like a banner on a hill. In other words, irrational fear just takes over. And, 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 and you, you start to go down all, all kinds of trails. You, you, you start to, you, you do this, you'll run away when no one's chasing you, you'll lose sleep when there's nothing to worry about. And, and right when you're about to experience a breakthrough, you'll despair and you'll give up. Fears rise and grow as long as you're not listening to God. And, and, and molehills will, will become mountains and innocent words will become weapons and motivations get questioned and anger gets elevated. One of the harshest symptoms of not getting quiet with God is that fears move from the periphery to the center and God moves from the center to the periphery. And if you're avoiding quiet with God because you don't want to listen to you and you don't want to listen to him and when you do that, here's what happens. All that stuff out there, those fears that are out there that should be handled easily, they become in here. And God who's in here should be here gets pushed out there. And that rational fears, they, they, they take over. Whether it's useless plans or the cycle of sin or irrational fears. Here's the truth about God. And Isaiah next, he says this in verse 18. In quiet and trust is your strength. That's where we're standing. But then he says this. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he'll rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who, look what it says, who wait for him. Okay, friends, listen. This idea of, of listening to God through quiet is a, is a far out concept. It is hard and we try to avoid it. It's biblical 
And yet, just like the Israelites, we get ourselves caught. Learning to listen through quiet is the secret weapon of real soul transformation. I'm telling you, there's, there's all the gimmicks that are out there. If you take this, this will happen, but I'm telling you that if you'll, if you'll work at this, if you'll practice this, and you can learn to listen to God through quiet, and you push the noise out, and you, and you let him speak to you, it is the secret weapon of soul transformation. Jesus himself needed quiet places so he could hear the voice of his father. Jesus himself did. All right, so let's close this. We've got about six minutes left to close with this. We've got the why. We, we kind of know why we should do this. That, that's, not, that's not the issue, okay? That, that's, a, that's kind of a no-brainer. And I'm no expert, but we've got to get to the how. And I've been practicing this for a while now, okay? So I'll walk down a few of these. My lessons from quiet, okay? So, so this is just me, and I've given you this one before, um, but, but these are my lessons from quiet, okay? When I finally stop, and when I finally, okay, God, here I am. Okay, when I finally do that. Here's the lessons that, that God has taught me that I, that I come back to again and again and again, because these... These are what trip me up. When I hurry and run and scurry and get slippery with people, this is why. So here's the lessons. When I get quiet, God reminds me that he is great. And since he's so great, I don't have to be in control. And when I get quiet with God, God reminds me that he is glorious. And I don't have to fear anything. He's the God of the universe who's someday going to come back and like we talked about the other week, set things right. And I, I don't have to fear because fear trips me up all the time. And, and when I get quiet with him and I let him speak, he reminds me that he's good. He's so good, in fact, that I don't have to look elsewhere for any fulfillment or any satisfaction. And when I get quiet with God, he reminds me not is he great and glorious and good, but he's gracious. And this is the big one for me. This is the disease for me. I don't have to prove myself because he's gracious. Like that, that verse 18, right? They, they went off and made their own plans. They didn't stop and, and, and listen to God through quiet, get their strength through quiet, and yet God still is waiting for them. He's still waiting for them to, to come to him. So those are my lessons. Let's get really practical now. And let, let's just, let me just give you some of my lessons and what I've learned about really how to do this, okay? So here's some practical tips on quiet. And again, this is not exhaustive and, 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 or anything like that. So, so let's, let, I'm just going to walk down these and you, you, you take these. Because if you could start, just think, if you'd start this these week, if you'd start practicing this, by the time we get to Easter, you'd have four weeks of practicing this. So here's, here's the first tip is this. You just decide, okay? This isn't one of those things you say, you know, I really want to do that someday, or I know I should do that, but I don't know. Just decide. Yes, you should do it. There is no other way to grow unless you get quiet and listen to the voice of God. There's no other way. So, and, and, and understand this. You decide to do it, and there is a learning curve, okay? It's, it, it's, it's not easy. It is so hard to be quiet. Oh. <laughs> All right. Next tip is this, place, paper, and pace. So place means this, find a place where you can have, where you can get quiet with him. Find a place, whether it's in the corner of your basement, and I know right now some of you like young families or you live in the dorm, like there's no place quiet in my whole world. But just do, do, do whatever you can. Get, get in the closet with a blanket over you. If it, but, but figure it out. Husband and wife, trade off. Figure out how you can do this. This is your time to get quiet with God. This is my time. And, and right? And listen, honestly, I know you don't want your kids in front of the screens. Turn the TV on for them if you have to. Just say, God, here I am, okay? But find a place. Have a paper ready. Have paper ready, whether it's a journal, whether it's just a notebook. But, 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 but have it ready. This is mine. I just have it open in front of me. And, and here's what I do. When I have a paper, two things can happen. Number one. As I'm trying to get quiet with God, my mind's going to move. We'll talk about that. But I, I'm, I, I have a reminder. Oh, I should, I, I forgot, I've got to get milk, or I should get gas, or I need to, right, do, oh, I got to remember to call, right? 
So just, just write that down. And once you put it on paper, it's off your mind. You, you can go, okay, I won't forget it. I won't forget it. The other thing that you can do is this, is you can, you can write down anything that God kind of gives you. You know, anything, God is great. <laughs> and he's so great, man, I, I, don't, I don't have to fear. He's glorious. I don't, he's gracious. I don't, I don't have to prove myself. And write, so anything like that, you, you, you write it down. So place, have some paper, and listen, here's the pace. Just breathe. Take a break. Relax. I have, I have this, uh, this card in my, my spot in the basement where it's my quiet space. Um, and I, I see it every day. Don't hurry. Love and hurry don't mix. They are oil and water. God walks slowly because he's love. The Bible always talks about walking with God, not running with God. And so when I talk about pace, what we mean is just breathe. You don't have to hurry through this. You don't have to do a half an hour, but just have a, have a place where you're going to do it, have a paper ready to go and just say, I don't have to hurry. God's going to meet me in the time that I have. And take a breath, okay? So that's good. Okay, let's go back to it now. So put, um, decide, place, paper, pace, and then this. I always do this, and we've taught our whole staff through this, the physical scan, where you literally sit down and you, and you find the areas of tension. You start from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, and you just relax. You let your shoulders down, you quit squeezing your jaw, you quit gnawing your teeth, you quit curling up your toes, right, everything. And you just say, okay, God, I just, I'm, I just want to receive. I just, I just want to receive. So, so, it's, so it's do this scan that, that helps you just relax and breathe. God, here I am. God, here I am. And just let it down all the way, top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Know this, that your mind will wander, okay? I know people, their mind wanders and they do this. Oh, God, I'm so stupid. I can't even sit quiet. My, I, always, I just I go here and I can't even concentrate and I do this. Listen, listen, pace. Your mind's going to wander. Smile and just bring it back. No big deal. Sometimes this is God putting your mind on something it needs to be on. And if it's not, don't beat yourself up. Just smile. God gave us wonderful minds and just bring it back to center on him. Last two. Pay attention to thoughts, words, impressions, names. So thoughts, words, impressions, name. I'm just, I'm just open, God, whatever you want to do. I'm breathing, I'm, 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 I'm going over like, God, you're good, God, you're great, God, you're gracious, God, you're glorious, your love, God, endures forever. I'm just being real quiet. I'm just breathing, I'm saying, God, speak to me. And just pay attention. Sometimes he'll bring a thought or a word or an impression or a name that, that he's actually saying, you need to call that person. Or this is an area of your life that, that this needs to get fixed. Or I'm gonna reveal something, here's a word I have for you, okay? And then the last one is this. Just focus on one verse or one passage. This isn't a contest to get through an entire book of the Bible. This isn't I got to pour through Leviticus. This isn't that. This is a verse or a passage that you just say, God, just speak to me. God, speak to me. Now, friends, listen, this is, this is just my little tips, okay? And, 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 and those are just my little lessons. But here's, here's what I want you to hear. I want, I want you to... I want you to to, to, to just remember this, that, that actively avoiding quiet with God is almost always because of sin. And if you can get to this, if you can practice and you can do this, a quiet place gives God room to cultivate a quiet posture in me. My friends, you want to grow? You want to change? You want to be a more a better mom, a better dad, a better friend, you want to follow this Jesus more closely, it's nearly impossible without this practice. Take a breath, get your place, and just let him speak. My prayer, my prayer for you, for all of us, is that this Lenten journey, as we march toward the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus, is that you have four weeks where you are learning to listen to God in multiple ways, but listen in quiet for his still, small voice.
dog in my mind racing and I can't seem to win all these crazy thoughts and feelings it's like it never ends until your voice breaks to my noise and I know I'm not alone I'm not alone you will fight my battles if I will just be still why would I keep on running when you're right here I'll just be quiet and let you speak through silence here I am no more hiding you are in this moment I won't fight it I'll be I don't need to know what comes next Tomorrow's in your hands I can't trust you with my future Cause you're already there I hear your voice Call me forward And I know I'm not alone I'm not alone Away with the distractions I wanna hear what's true The only words that matter They come from you I'll just be quiet And let you speak through the silence Here I am, no more hiding You are in this moment, I won't find it be quiet Thanks, John. And our encouragement, um, our challenge, our call to action to you is to have that consistent space, uh, that daily quiet time with God. And a lot of us um, can fall out of those routines for many good excuses. Uh, maybe our kids are up early. I know that's um, one of our realities. Uh, maybe you have to be into work or you have other distractions or other things competing for your time and attention. And those are all real things. Um, but what we know is we all do have the time. Uh, we just have to uh, make the decision to prioritize it. Uh, we all spend some time on TV or on our phones or on our devices, whatever that looks like, which are fine. Uh, those are okay things. Um, but when those compete for our time with God, that's when they become a problem. So my encouragement uh, to you would be to, to, to just look at how you're spending your day, to figure out where you could carve out that margin. Uh, maybe it's before you watch TV, before you watch your couple episodes, maybe you um, spend 20 minutes of quiet time. You get in, 
Um, you spend some time in the Word. You spend some time in prayer. Um, you just have that daily consistent time with God. My encouragement to you is to just figure out what that looks like for you uh, and to just get after it this week to do that uh, because I know this, that if you give God room, He will use it. I encourage you to do that here this week. And kids, you are up next. Uh, children's ministry is about ready to begin. Um, and everyone else will see you back next week. So there! I can't send that. Delete, delete, delete. Oh, hey! Welcome to Story Lab!
This week, we're talking about forgiveness while we take a look at the story of someone who found a higher perspective. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about forgiveness, which is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. Spoiler alert, there is money in today's story. A handful of pennies is not really a lot of money. That's what you think. These pennies could buy a lot in 1950. That's what I thought. In 1950, a loaf of bread cost 12 cents, a comic book cost 10 cents, and a candy bar cost 5 cents. It takes a lot more pennies to buy a candy bar now, Zeke. Yeah, but it only takes one penny for me to amaze you. Really? Oh yeah, I shall now make this penny disappear just by rubbing it. Mm-hmm. Observe. <laughs> See? You Gone. just made all those pennies fall off the table. You have no sense of mystery. Ah, but I do. I know how to amaze you with this penny. How so? I can make all this dirty tarnish disappear in a single step. You're on. Then, let's, let's do, do it. it. Step one, find a really dark, dirty penny and place it in a dish. Done. Step two, take out your super secret cleaning agent. Hot sauce? Yep, any kind will do. Squeeze some hot sauce on the penny and then rub it around. What now? Wait 10 minutes. Step three, rub the penny with your fingers and then rinse it with water. See? Ta-da! That is so cool. I can't believe it's the same penny. I know, right? Copper becomes dirty or tarnished when oxygen in the air reacts with the copper to form copper oxide. Hot sauce has vinegar, which contains acetic acid and salt, or sodium chloride. Both help to break the copper oxide free from the penny. Double whammy. The hot sauce wipes the dirt away like it was never there. You know, my mom has this giant copper tub that's extremely tarnished. You think the hot sauce would work on it? I mean, there is only one way to find out. Ready? Ready. You know, I wonder how this tastes. I don't think you want to taste that, Zeke. Oh, is that a dare? It's a double dare. Okay. Oh, that's not half bad. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh that, that's hot. Oh, oh, that's hot. Oh, whoa. Oh, that's really hot. <laughs> Zeke, I would love oh. some help. Give me a moment. Uh. <laughs> moment of truth? Moment of truth. It looks so different. It's completely changing it. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in Luke, the third book in the New Testament. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationships. So at the right time, God made a teeny tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. Everywhere Jesus went, big crowds of people pressed in around him. Religious leaders, everyday people, even Roman soldiers, and people who were considered outcasts. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. One day, Jesus and his followers passed through the city of Jericho on their way to Jerusalem. As usual, a huge crowd gathered. They pressed in from all sides along the road, hoping to see Jesus, to, to touch him, to, to be healed. But one man was stuck on the edge of the crowd. 
a tax collector named Zacchaeus. Now, we know three things about Zacchaeus. He had a really hard to spell name, he had a lot of money, and he was super short, which meant he was basically getting run over by this crowd. Now, okay, you've got to understand about tax collectors, nobody liked them. And to be honest, it was for a good reason. Tax collectors were Jewish people who worked for the Roman government that was ruling over them. So it was like they were working for the enemy. And to make it worse, tax collectors got paid by demanding extra money for themselves. So Zacchaeus had gotten rich by taking money from his neighbors. In spite of all this, Zacchaeus really wanted a chance to see Jesus. Maybe he'd even heard that one of Jesus' own disciples, Matthew, had been a tax collector. Uh, please, could I get through? But no one wanted to give way to the man who had taken their money. Finally, Zacchaeus looked ahead and saw a sycamore tree right at the edge of the road. That's it? Zacchaeus raced ahead to that tree and climbed right up to a sturdy branch that reached out over the road. <laughs> Best seat in the house. The crowd drew closer and closer until Jesus was right below Zacchaeus. There's just something about him. At that very moment, Jesus looked up. Zacchaeus could feel his heart racing. He could tell that somehow Jesus knew everything about him, all the wrong things he had done, all the lies he had told, and the money he had stolen. Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay at your house today. What? <laughs> Jesus could have been annoyed with Zacchaeus or called him out in front of everyone for the wrong things Zacchaeus had done. But instead, Jesus invited himself over to have dinner with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus's heart filled with joy as he rushed ahead to prepare his home for Jesus. Jesus, come in! Lots of people had followed. They couldn't believe that Jesus would choose to hang out with somebody who had done so many wrong things. Jesus has gone to be the guest of that sinner! Zacchaeus was filled with gratitude. Jesus loved him and had chosen to forgive him. And Zacchaeus knew he couldn't keep on living his old life. Look, Lord, here and now I give half of what I own to those who are poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay it back. I will pay back four times the amount I took. Today, salvation has come to your house. The Son of Man came to look for the lost and save them. In a single day, Zacchaeus went from outcast to beloved follower of Jesus. His entire life was changed from the inside out. The end. Wow, that's amazing. So Zacchaeus promised to give away half of what he had, plus four times the amount that he cheated out of anyone. That might have been everything he owned. But it didn't matter because Jesus. Jesus had forgiven Zacchaeus completely, even before he asked. So what's our part in the story? Well, forgiveness can change people, starting with you. When you ask God to forgive you of the wrong things you've done, it frees you from carrying around a load of guilt and fear. It, it frees you to love God and love others. And when you choose to forgive those who have wronged you, it can change them too. Like maybe your little brother borrows your video game without asking and messes it up. You could yell at him, get in a big argument, and stay mad for days. Or you could choose to forgive your brother. Then you don't have to carry that anger. Plus, it could change your brother's heart, too, and make a way for you to be friends. Forgiving someone does not always mean that they will change, but it opens the door for them to live differently. Like Zacchaeus. Exactly. Sharing God's forgiveness with others is a pretty incredible gift. It sure is. See you next time. So here's the thing, when you forgive others, it can change them. And hot sauce. Hot sauce can change things too. Mmm, now you make making me want some hot sauce. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next time. time.